Hey everyone, welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. The end is upon us. And so I've actually done enough grinding, by playing it enough, to have 29 fat loots. So I will, in fact, buy a dried gelatinous cube. So. Gelatinous cube. Now you too can have your very own cube-shaped blob of viscous dungeon mucus. Just add water. Attach it to the gelatinous cubeling. Put the dry gelatinous cube in your familiar grow terrarium. Pouring some water on the cube of dried stuff, change it into a larger cube of moist stuff. You name him Schlurp. That's a perfect name. That's an amazing name. It's a one pound gelatinous cubeling. Gelatinous cube. Great for sweeping dungeon floors and dungeon monsters. Weakens enemies before, com before combat and helps you pick up items. I'll roll with you, Schlurp. I like, your, I like the cut of your jib. All right. So we are heading to... I'm recording, right? Yes, I appear to be. I'm heading to the Misspelled Cemetery. Close that. Misspelled Cemetery. Killed by a big cougar. I wish that was me. Lily Orc Pajamas Russell. Interesting. And Maud Fernandez. Strangled by a Dominatrix. Nice, 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 nice. All right. Um, so we're looking for the Wand of Nargamar. Carpet is still empty. Busted that at s several episodes ago. Unknown tomb. Okay, well, that's fine. Finding a skeleton. A very skeleton. I mean, it's a normal skeleton, but it's scary in the fact that it's walking towards you, quenching its bony fists. Even though it moves in cheap stop motion, it is menacing. Schlurp vacuums up some loose trash and stuff. Man, getting the useful stuff out of there is going to be so gross. Okay. Schlurp plops wetly around the scene, helping you pick stuff up. Thank you, Schlurp. A grave rober. Grave rober. He steals things from graves, or mostly from people in the graves. You jump him. Schlurp shudders and disgorges an item with a wet squelch. Doc Galactic's ailment ointment. Ew. That's so gross. <laughs> Ugh. I'm actually, like, gagging a little bit. Fighting a smart skeleton. This is a brainless automaton of evil only with a brain. You get the jump on him. Well, let's hit him, I guess. Schlurp vacuums up some loose trash and stuff. We got a smart skull. Another one. You're finding a lich. A lich is an abomination that results when a powerful magician binds his life force to a body in a desperate attempt to become immortal. This one waited a little too long since his body was just a skull by the time he got around to binding it. Thank you, Schlurp. Okay, let's go to the very unquiet garbs. Oh! Walk over to the one of the graves, you suddenly, you suddenly shudder as though a goose walked over your grave. Put your head to the ground and hear sinister whispers rising from beneath the earth. Plunge your hand to the soil and your fingers close around the source. A figure of an infernal seal. <gasps> oh, okay. Main quest on <laughs> main quest to the side. We've gotta we've gotta do this. This has gotta happen. Oh fuck. Um, this is a little black figurine of a seal. A clay figurine of a seal, black as pitch, black as midnight. Hard to make any details, as all the figures of the seal, features of the seal, seem to be painted on a black-on-black -black background. Intriguing. Well, that reminds me, I can use this. Give me more strength, jackass. Okay. What does this do, also? Cute plushy version of an astral banjer, suitable for dancing, hugging, and if you're prosecuting attorney, throwing at recalcitrant witnesses. Nice. Uh, oh, let me be in here. Um, let's find... I need a vial of seal blood. Recalcitrant is a very good word, by the way. What does this do? Oh, Lord. Not getting into that yet. Okay. Oh, right. Wow. Patterned seal bone. Is this it? Yeah, it's this and normal... Oh, I got a box of sunshine. Box contains a beam of golden smiling light. Maybe it's not a beam, a collection of motes. What is it with a dual nature light, anyway? It's hard to tell whether it's a beam or some motes. It used to be that sunshine came in bags, but people didn't think that was useful. We got the smile of Mr. A. Bear of a golden uh, accessory smiled on. You feel, must... you feel really good. I have plus 15 to everything. Nice. Let's craft shit. 
All right. And I think it's powdered seal bone and a seal blub candle, right? Blub. Oh, right. Okay. Powdered seal bone. Seal blub candle. Give me all. All right. Back to the lab again. Bonk. All right. You're finding a shadow of black bubbles. Light the candle and speak the ancient words. A thick and penetrable darkness gathers around you and the air takes on a menacing chill. As though it were just hanging out and relaxing, but had a really threatening look on its face. Speaking of threatening faces, a shape emerges from the shadow, and it's the shape of a face of a seal. It's followed shortly thereafter by the shape of a rest of a seal. Legend of the Northern Tribes said the last thing you say before you enter the great beyond is the shadow of black bubbles of the Steel Reaper. Now that you're faced with one, time to prove them wrong. You managed to prove them wrong about the whole athlete's foot slash reindeer urine thing, so that shouldn't be too hard. Let's, um... Let's just go all out, right? <laughs> nice. Schlurp oozes around. Pick up debris from the battle. We got an 11 foot fall. Um, let's just. Shadow seal. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything. Shadow seal clever. Shadow black. Shadow black bubbles. Here we go. So what does it do? Oh, it has a random chance to drop Scrap of Shadow and Shadowy Seal Eye. Damn. Oh, it could also come from this. Well, that's nice. So this does damage, but also adds stuff to the monster. Interesting. And this reduces damage and adds damage to your weapon. Temporarily. You can also make an evil-ass club out of it. Oh, yeah, there's all these... You can make a bunch of shit out of the badass club. And the badass club becomes, like, cold-ass club and shit like that. Okay, so let's see what I'm actually doing here. Um, one of Nagamar. Okay. The very unquiet garbs. Corpulent zombie. Okay. Oh, Frank looks at a nearby tombstone. Jeff O'Neill killed by a war dog. Saying the right stone, boss. Okay. I wanted to see if there's any trick to it, but. Zedok Jordan, muddied by hockey player. Negamar's grave has got to be around here somewhere. Yeah, because um, one of the things in this game, and in West of Loathing for that matter, is that the all the graves have randomly generated names on them. Uh, randomly generated names, ages, dates of death, and causes of death. And sometimes epitaphs as well. Oh, another one. Cool. Grave Rober. A ring of detect boring doors. Brennan England, murdered by an embalmer. Guess we keep looking, Chief. His voice is all over the place. Um, hmm. Um, hmm. Ring of detect boring doors. Detects boring doors, duh. Cast fine secret door. Once per ascension. Wow. Oh, shit. Interesting. It allows you to skip ahead. Well, that's kind of cool. Not really useful to me. And apparently you can also craft the, uh, the thing together. Another shadow seal. D Zane Dunn killed by Badger. This ain't the right stone, boss. Spinny Selkin Skelton. The skeleton covered by a thick layer of bony spikes, or maybe spiky bones, you're not sure. Gavin Berger killed by elk. Lucius Levine died of an infected elbow. Ellie Luna died of the Ghiblies. Ghibli? What the fuck? <laughs> Bailey Barrett murdered by lingerie model. Wrong grave. Wow. Uh, lucky guy. Lucy and Dale murdered by garbage man. Wow. Thanks, Schlurp, for getting so much stuff. Oh, Schlurp got a pound. He's four pounds now. Yuri Downs killed by Weasel. Abigail Skingle Singleton killed by Ibex. Maybe it's an Ibex. Um, 
Okay, so let's see if there's anything that I can do to speed this up. The very unquiet garves. Snake Kelaton. Interesting. Count Bakula. Okay. Bear Verb Orgy. Only occurs after losing to her. Okay. Oh. Well. That was... That's pretty lucky. Your vision begins to swim as you approach a peculiar tombstone. It looks like it says pre instead of rip. Weird. Leaning against the stone, you see some hot gravy utensils. That's strange. Someone must have been here recently if the utensils are still hot. Shake your head. Why do you think that there were utensils here? What is actually here is a giant rusty shovel. That'll come in handy for your next task. Hug vapid egret. Reach out to the egret to give it a hug. An egret is a bird like a crane, by the way. They're very common in where I live. Well, they were common where I live, but then I moved, actually. So Vapid doesn't even know your gesture and flies off. No, no, no. That's not even a little bit what happens. Shake your head. Grab the utensil. No, you grab the shovel and dig up the grave. Six feet down, you unearth an iffy taco nog menorah and think to yourself, I should not drink the taco nog in those candles. Looks iffy. You okay down there, chief? You're startled from your reverie to see an ornate mahogany coffin. You probably open the coffin to reveal a magnate's snorkel. You think a guy this important could hire someone to keep better care of his snorkels? Keep it together, boss. Pry open the coffin to reveal Nagamar's skeleton, clutching a simple wooden wand. You grab it, shove it in your sack, and leave the weird grade site as fast as your feet will carry you. Nice. That's oh, right, Jack. Oh, you also did the arena. Burb, yeah, ver bear verb or is an anagram of grave robbery, and I think all of these are anagrams of other relevant things. I mean, that would make the most sense. Anyway. Wow. Um, yeah, I guess we're going to just go back in, right? Reach down in your eyes. Oh, you got to go all the way again? Oh my god, you really got to go all the way again. Okay. Let's do a normal thrust mac. Shit, okay. Knob Goblin Firecracker. Oh, so he just gives me random shit, huh? Club foot. Oh, as you're preparing to use the skill, creature suddenly lashes out with several tentacles and wraps around you, pinning your arms down. Struggle free, but are unable to pull off what you were trying to do. Wants to smack you around, so she does. She wants to smack you down, so she does. Well, she does. She spears your solar plexus with a fang, then entangles it in her tentacles. Talk about adding insult to injury. Start to use that scroll. The creature belches in a manner so disgusting you have to pause for a minute to prevent yourself from retching. She cooks you up a nice spaghetti breakfast. It sounds good, but it really, really hurts. I actually made a bunch of spaghetti sauce the other night. I think my wife and I are going to make some rice and have it with the uh, spaghetti sauce. Some extreme rice, perhaps. Oh, should I? Well, I guess I need to do it later. Right? Can I do this? And then she gave me another smooch kiss. Oh, here we go. Okay. Finding the naughty sorcerers. Dang it, you shout. How many times do I have to kill you? Spells taken over. Yada, yada, yada. Fires a beam of dark energy at you. Your wand of Nagamar begins to glow brightly. The beam of dark energy becomes a baked fairy gnome. What's up, dude? Do you need to cross the river, dude? <laughs> the gnome looks through bloodshot eyes. Wait, where am I? He says, and he wanders off. I like that he says need because he's a gnome that's <laughs> oh, that makes me chuckle the sausage is actually with a barrage of condiments you mustered up the curse to wave your wand of nagamar which glows brightly the barrage disappears and in its place you see a grand fabric moose net the net hangs in the air to seek out moose to a trap what doesn't see it around it vanishes the sausage spins grows a disgusting vestigial mouth ugh, and moans a nauseating sum Stomach churns a sickening, sickening mathematic equations bounce off the walls. That's it. The line must be drawn here. One of Nagamar glows extra bright as you wave it in complex geometric patterns and summon an anti-sausage. The anti-sausage flows to the sausage. You're almost blown at the top of the tower by the force of the explosion, but when the dust settles, 
See, the sausage is destroyed, and your way to the king is clear. Um, I like that. Uh... <laughs> I I literally have a joke with my friends that if we ever say anti anything, I make the joke that uh, the the antis will meet and the anti will meet the normal and then they'll touch and annihilate and become energy. All right, go back to the sorcerer's chamber. Oh shit! Oh, he's imprisoned because he's in a crystal. You shout, hi, Kiva, and deliver a fierce karate chop to the prison. I forget what movie that's from, but I know it was featured on MST3K. MST3K. Shatters into a quintillion tiny pieces of magic, which whirl around the king and blow him back to safety on top of the devastated sorcerer's tower. Shards of magic form a swirling vortex in the sky, which rips a gash through the fabric of reality. Oops. King Ralph the Ninth stands before me as regal glowy. I'm sorry, adventurer, but the king is in another castle. Then he breaks into a hearty chuckle. Well done, adventurer. You laid the smack down with that skank with... Admirable, daring do and panache. I am eternally in your debt. Nice work, Chief. You really showed it. With that out of the way, I can finally shuffle off what's left of the mortal coil. See you on the other side. Frank vanishes into the shimmering portal behind where the king's prism used to be. All right. Congratulations, adventure. It's the end of your quest as we know it. Don't worry, we feel fine. You freed the king and made us obsolete. Ah, well, hail the king, baby. There's one little matter of obscure prophecy we forgot to tell you about, though. Sorry, Dave, our librarian, brought it to you and brought it to our attention. Your physical presence is somehow tied to the continued monster attacks in the kingdom. As long as you remain on this ex plane of existence, the attacks will continue. It wasn't just the sorceress. The monsters just really, really don't like you. I don't suppose you'd bugger off this moral coil, would you? Our instruments, especially the tuba, show there's a rip in the fabric of reality that appeared when you fought the sorceress. If you jump in there, you'll ascend to a higher plane, and peace will rule our land. Can I go say bye to people? I kind of want to. Nothing, huh? <laughs> so I could stick around and complete the side quest that I didn't want to. Um, yeah, the dude wants me to go fuck with the seven foot dwarves. Well, I'm just... Hmm... Nah. What the hell? Let's put this to rest. Let's go to the Astral Gash. Oh my god, that's what it's called? <laughs> let's go to the Astral Gash and let's ascend to a higher plane of existence. And let's beat Kingdom of Loathing. By stepping into the Astral Gash, ugh, you can shuffle off this particular mortal coil and ascend to a higher plane of existence. Make sure you understand the information in the Ascension FAQ before you do this. Yeah. Ah, I want to do it. What is Ascension? How is Ascension spelled? Just like that. What does it mean? It means after you defeat the Naughty Sorceress, your character will have the opportunity to ascend to the afterlife and start over as a level one player. Start over? Why do I want to do that? Let's play the game again with new challenges, more variety of gameplay. Oodles of new Ascension only content and the option to change your class. Each class has own challenge and rewards. Sounds hard. Doesn't have to be. When you move to the afterlife, you'll be able to choose the Ascension you play. You can send casually and maintain free access to your stuff, or go for a challenging one with limited resources. Pick the more challenging route, you can accumulate the skills of different classes over multiple ascensions. Imagine being able to conjure dry noodles, make scrumptious reagents, and make your familiar heavier all at the same time. Do I have to ascend? No, but if you don't, you'll miss out on cool stuff. What'll happen to my familiars? All of them will stay there, but revert to one pound. Goes to the campground. Everything goes away except your closet and quest log, and if you have them in your terrarium, Trophy case and certificate of participation. If it don't go casual, what happens to my stuff? All the non-quest items in your inventory and closet will be automatically stored at Hank's... Oh, it's probably a gnome, so it's Hank, but with a G. Ancestral mini storage on the right side of the tracks. Quest items, those who have the description quest item, be removed so you can gather them and complete the quest again. So I get my stuff right after I ascend? Not exactly. First 1,000 turns, you'll be a ronin or a wandering load adventurer. You will take 20,000 meat or 20 items or a combination of the two out of storage per day. What's a ronin? I'm going to be Japanese for 1,000 turns? Ronin means you're a loner, a badass who doesn't need any help from anyone. We'll be able to take items or receive buffs from other players, buy stuff from the Mall of Three Market, take anything from your clan stash, or receive any clan benefits. Extra turns, meat tree, meat, tree meat, training, or buffs during that time. You can still visit the gym, and you can send items and buffs to other players. Why would you make it so I can't trade with people? 
Hate you, want you to fail. No. Actually, we love you, and we want you to have as much fun with the challenge game as possible. Therefore, we made it so you can't take the easy way out and get everything you need from a friend or multi. What about the mall store? You'll keep it. During Ronin or Hardcore, you can still add items to your store and manage the prices, but you can't take items out of it until you get to a point where you'll be able to see them from other players. Any meat you'd normally receive from the transactions while you're in Ronin will go into Hanks. The Ken Museum stuff will stay there. PvP is available as an option for Ronin and Hardcore. You may only attack or be attacked by... Uh, for rank or flowers, hardcore players may only attack or be attacked by other hardcore. When you send your hippie stone and glue back together and your ranking and win-loss records are reset. When you send, you'll get to pick one skill to add to your permanent skills. When you ascend, you'll start with the skills on the list. What do I have to do to ascend? Unequip everything, including the familiar. Have no trade offers and take the plunge. Your familiar weight and kills and your short kills will reset to zero. You're going to a certain total weight of familiars or number of short trips. Get there before you send. What's this I've heard about hardcore ascension and different paths of ascension? More ways to make ascension more challenging and interesting, as well as net you more and better rewards when you finish. Hardcore ascension means that you will have no access to items or meat that don't drop while you're fighting monsters and having adventures. No clan stash, no mall, no flea market, no items sent in messages from other players, no buffs from other players. It's a challenging way to play, but it's a unique experience, and for most players, it should be a lot of fun. The paths are other ways to make the ascension more challenging. The oxygenarian path means you won't be allowed to eat food or drink booze through the course of your ascension. Booze to Farian means you can drink booze but can't eat or drink non-alcoholic beverages. And teetotaler means you can't drink booze. You can choose one of the three or none of them. You can choose to add one to a hardcore ascension or just have the path without a hardcore. If you choose either hardcore or path ascension or both, you'll get more rewards when you complete the ascension and be eligible for certain leaderboards. And you know deep in your heart, you're cooler than those who didn't take the challenge. What if I start and don't like it? Go to a normal ascension and leave any pass from the account menu. You won't be punished for doing so, but you won't get the record the, re uh, the rewards. What happens with Mr. A. You can donate and receive as many new Mr. A's. You can pull out pull Mr. A's out of Hanks to you can purchase items from Mr. Store. You cannot equip Mr. A's or any Mr. Store equipment during a hardcore run. This is all online stuff. Yada, yada, yada. What are the Zodiac signs? Moon signs that subtly alter your destiny in the game. They all have minor effects on gameplay that are useful for each class, magic, muscle, muscle and moxie. Each of the three signs come with its own unique content as well. What do they all do? Try them and see. None of do anything bad, so pick your favorite small mammal and go for broke. So, that's basically everything. Confirm. Yeah, seriously. And let's ascend. Beyond the Pale. I'm level infinity. I'm an astral spirit now. I've got infinite everything. I have no familiar. And I have zero karma. And I'm now a ghost. Howdy! Welcome to the afterlife, adventurer. Reckon you're itching to see what's on the other side of these here gates. We've got some business to take care of before I can let you through. Let's see. Dora, Mr. Buraski. Here you are. Dusky Alfred. Woo-wee. Quite a life you lived. For rescuing King Ralph the Ninth in normal incarnation, I get 101, 111 karma. Alrighty, head on in there, Shaggy. You've earned it. You gain access to Valhalla. All right. Jury's Permary. So, by spending 100 karma, I can make one of these permanent. And I can always have it no matter what, even if I'm on a different class. Some of these are a little more or less useful, and some of them mean that I actually cannot do them because I will need to have a club, which is not the item the class uses. So, you know. We got Pet Heaven. Welcome to the Astral Pet Store, home of the finest and only pet reincarnated piece of equipment. Trade in some karma for one pet for your next reincarnation. So I can buy some dope shit. Astral Bludgeon. It adds 25% weapon, 5 to 10 damage, plus 20 damage, and 15% chance of crit. This is an elephant that's been reincarnated as a hefty club. Depending on which part of it you hold, you get a variety of different impressions as to what the elephant was shaped like in previous life. Wow. Astral pistol. That's that's funny. Welcome to the Delhi Lama. We don't we make sure you don't go into your next life with inadequate refreshment. Limit one per customer, some restrictions may apply. Start from container containing three astral hot dogs. The exact right number of hot dogs for the perfect meal. Until you open it, you can't decide whether the hot dogs inside are amazing or awesome. Astral Six Pack. You'd hope they serve beer and helping, and you weren't disappointed. So, let's finish this out. Because what I really want you to do, 
I want everyone to go out and play Kingdom of Loathing. I, I just want them to do it, you know? I, I fucking love this game. I love this game, I love West of Loathing, and I love Kingdom of Roguing. And I think that this game deserves so much more clout than it's getting. I know that it has 300 people online at... 200 to 300 people online at any given time. And that West of Loathing sold a bunch, but... Fuck, this game is so good. This game is so good. You don't get it. Bureau of Reincarnation. Hey, kid, welcome to the Bureau. Getting bored up here? Head back down there and give another go? I got you covered. After Afterlife, Al, President of Reincarnation. So let's, um, let's actually perm. Let's perm fortitude to the mus muskox. Oop, let's go here. Let's say we're going normal. So we can be a new class. New gender. We can now do gray goo. So normal one is you get this item and 50 karma. This one lets you unleash a prismatic attack. Yada yada. But this one. A self-replicating mass of gray goo has invaded... The kingdom from the furthest reaches of space. Destroy as much of it as you can in three days. Wow. And you get an inert gray goo ring. So the moon, the moon sign will do stuff that makes you different. Got the mongoose, which is a muscle class. Wallaby, spell class. The vole, which is moxie, more health, and combat initiative. So kind of a, uh, a thing. Platypus. Unlocks a little Canadian, which I don't think I ever went to. More muscle and gives you more familiar. So this is um, a muscle class, but it's really more for the turtle tamer, I would say. Possum. Little Canada. More adventures for food. And more magic, so alt, alt rock magic. Marmot. Moxie gains and a free 10-leaf clover every day. Wombat. Gnomish nomad camp. Muscle, uh, muscle gains and meat, so the blender. Blenders know how to have a good time. Gnomish Nomad, Mystical and Booze, and the Pack Rat. More items, more Moxie, and more that. So I'm actually going to go with... Yeah, I'm going to go with Mongoose. So currently... Actually, can I... Oh, yeah. Low-key summer. Tap it out of the way locations. Variety's key. Path of the Plumber. Jump, hammer, and fireball through the kingdom. So this one makes it all a lot more... <laughs> so that one makes it all a lot more Mario-ish Kingdom of Exploding Kingdom's been blown a bit So that one The whole thing's been blown up And you're just jumping from like rocks to rocks Two crazy random summers I don't know what this does I assume it just makes shit more random Dark Gift Live a grim facsimile of life As a powerful vampire Oh that's That's funny So I assume that's like a vampire the masquerade thing Disguises Delimit Everyone in the kingdom is disguised. Swap powerful masks with unidentified monsters. Is that like a persona? G lover or Glover. You love G. Any item, effect, or skill without a G in it doesn't do anything for you. Interesting. Pocket familiars. So this one makes your familiars work like a Pokemon and makes the whole game into a Pokemon. Live, ascend, repeat. Time keeps repeating over and over. You gotta break out. A reference to Edge of Tomorrow, naturally. License to Adventure. This is a reference to James Bond. Gelatinous Noob. Gelatinous cube with aspirations of humanity. Absorb items to gain power. Nuclear autumn. This one is a reference to Fallout. The source. This one's a reference to, you know, the Matrix. Avatar West of Loathing. So this one actually gets you the classes from West of Loathing and some other shit from West of Loathing. Um, I would say just play West of Loathing because you can start doing it from the beginning. But community service. Ultimate real-time savings. All council quests are replaced with single-button quicks. Interesting. I assume that's just to skip through the main quest and do some other shit. All across loathing, monsters have changed in strange and unpredictable ways. More random, I guess. Oh, yeah, like that one. So you play as Ed the Undying. Ed the Undying is back, not that he left, and the supernova that adventure is still something for them. Recover his slash your property. Yes, the perspective shift is even more unusual in this one, with ancient curses, powerful spells, modified servants, and the jackal-headed demons in the underworld. So you get access to all the skills that he had, and modified version so you can play as the boss but this is this is your boss mode picky only three familiars and 11 skills pick wisely heavy rains everything's wet 
Southern City. 100 adventures per day, no more, no less. Interesting. Uh, so this one is where you play as Sneaky Pete, who is the, like, anticipation for the, the thief class. Class Act. Class Warfare. Start with your class's guild skills. Keep living high school. You're back in high school. Big. Been a game much larger, but the monsters are larger too. So in this one, I think you can actually fight the kingdom itself. Like, you fight the map, essentially, and no one's ever been able to defeat it ever. Avatar of Jarlsberg. So here you actually become the big badass super wizard, the anticipation of the wizard classes. Class act, again, same thing. Class fights. Zombie slayer. Zombies be taken over. Bugbear invasion. Bugbears be taken over. Avatar of Boris, you become the in anticipation of the strength class. Trendy, you can only use new shit. We have Surprising Fist. Bare hands, but you get a bunch of monk skills. So this is almost like a new skill. Bees hate you. The letter B anywhere will damage you. And then we mentioned these, and then Unrestricted is just whatever. But yeah, we can just... Let's just pick one. Um, I've always been interested in Pocket Familiars and Kim Loathing High School. So let's... Let's be a disco bandit. Let's be a male disco bandit. Let's go in. Gonna step into a normal incarnation. Be born on the Mongoose side as a disco bandit. Moon side not, may, may not be appropriate. You've chosen this. You didn't buy anything from the Dalai Lama. Want to reincarnate without an astral pet? Uh, let me fix that. Oh, I've been buying and returning them. Excuse me. Okay. You only get one. That's fine. Let's get the hat. Why not? Let's say it's a hardcore. Let's be an accordion thief. And let's... Let's see pocket familiars. Let's be the pack rat. All right. Once more to the breach for real. All right. I'm here. Hello there. Welcome to meet you. Welcome to the world of Poker Fam. My name is Bradford. Call me the Poker Fam Professor. Oh, man. You're off. Wow. <laughs> wow it really becomes pokemon that's incredible <laughs> wow um i'm amazed that's kingdom of loathing everyone absolutely my longest lp um probably like a good fifth of the videos on my channel have been about this and just wow I'm so amazed that I finally beat this game after playing it for years. I'm astounded that... What will happen if I close this? Good, it just goes to black. I'm... Uh, I'm astounded that I got this much out of it, but as I wanted to mention, this game's free, so by showing you how to what happens in it, I've been stealing this fucking game from the developers. So please, go play it yourself. That's why I stopped like doing side quests, just because... Like, the side quests are now there for you to discover. And you should go discover, because this game's fucking free. And the other paths are there for you to discover, because this game is free. So, by all means, please go and make Kingdom of Loathing. Play Kingdom of Loathing. Support the developers. And for the last time in Kingdom of Loathing, wow. I've been Alfred. This game has been Kingdom of Loathing. You know, because I record this, recorded this with so much lead time, this is technically the second LP I've ever finished. Since I cheaped out on Halo Wars, Morrowind didn't, and as of right now, Pokemon Uranium is in a weird place. But I beat Reach normal style. This was a lot longer. In fact, five times longer, approximately. So. Wow. I'm getting a head rush. 
Thanks, everyone, for coming by. I've been Alfred. I'll see you guys next time. I will play West of Loathing. If they ever make another Kingdom of Loathing game, anything, anything else Loathing, I will be there to play it. Might take me a bit, but I will do it. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Good luck. Good night.